Hey everybody! Welcome back to another Saturday Anything Goes. I'm glad that you joined me. This time last week many of us were at onstage local events and we got to play with so many really nice things that are coming up in our new annual catalog which will be available uh, for customers to purchase from starting in June. There will be a pre-order in May uh, of just a delightful bundle. I'll try and talk a little bit more about that at the end of this segment. But um, the reason I bring all that up is I actually got to see some of it before almost uh, anybody else except for display board stampers. Yep, I was a display board st uh, stamper. And what that meant was a couple months ago, uh, Stampin' Up! sent me a box of brand new goodies and said, have fun with it, make some cards, scrapbook pages, and other things to put up on display for onstage. Um, so I was very happy to do that. And one of the things that was included in my box was the DSP that you see used on this card. And this card is what we're going to be making today. The uh, DSP is called, let me just bring out my cheat sheet here. It's still so new that I have to look to get the names right. And this is called Nature's Poem um, Designer Series Paper. And it has a lot of really nice prints and patterns in it but I was drawn to uh, this one. It uses fresh fig and crushed curry, which are just delightful together. So this is the one we're going to be making today, and it should go fairly quickly. I love making cards um, that are little vignettes, little pictures, if you will, that tell a story. And with spring out there right now, and the flies and butterflies just now starting to come out. The dragonflies should be coming out next month. My roses are already putting out buds. Um, so I wanted to make something, a card that would really reflect the beauties of nature. I'll pull this one aside and pull out what we're going to be using. So I have a fresh fig card base. It's top folding. So it's uh, cut at four and a quarter by 11, scored and folded at five and a half. I cut a piece of that beautiful designer series paper uh, just a little bit smaller. So this is four inches by five and a quarter inches and it will layer nicely on that card base. I just wanted a thin border all the way around. We're also gonna be using some new twine. This is uh, nature's, uh, it's from the Nature's Bundle. There are three colors. You've got Crushed Curry, Mint Macaron, and the Fresh Fig. So we'll be using this uh, just as kind of a border over on the left-hand side. I also cut a little bow that we'll use. And it's just a little triple bow. I left the tails long because I like to cut them after I've mounted it onto uh, the card itself. And then for our little vignette, I have cut three pieces of Whisper White. These are cut at one and a half inch square, and I want to mat them on the fresh fig to help them stand out from the card base. And so I believe the uh, fresh fig mat is one and five eighths inch square. And then we'll have a couple other little things that we're using, dimensionals and some new glitter dots, but let's just go ahead and get started with making our card. Pull out my fresh fig stamping pad. That's the ink we're gonna be using. And the three stamp sets that we're using our Peaceful Reflection, Love What You Do, and those are both brand new. And then the sentiment is from Beautiful Bouquet. Now, when we look at 
stamp sets. Oftentimes, we sort of, we build our card around main images. For instance, on the Peaceful Reflection, we have this beautiful water plant. On Love What You Do, the sentiments really take center stage. But I love the smaller stamps to use in little groupings like we're going to have on today's card. And so, as you can see, we've got the dragonfly here. Oh, I guess I need to bring it down so you can see it. Our dragonfly is right there. And then we're going to use just the two roses from um, the smaller stamp in Love What You Do. Before I do any stamping though, because I always forget this part until after I've got the card partially made and then it's a nightmare trying to uh, pull it up and get this done, but I want to wrap the designer series paper with some of that fresh fig twine. So I'm going to bring that out here and I'm just going to use a mini dimensional to hold my twine secure on the back. So I'll put one at the top and one at the bottom. You can use scotch tape for this. You can use fast fuse for this, whatever you have handy. And you know what? Actually, I take it back. I'm not going to use dimensionals because I want the card uh, the design panel to lay flat on the card. Instead, I'm going to use our mini glue dots. So I'll just pull a couple of these out. Get my pokey tool. And lift one up. Make sure I've got this the way I want it. So I'll put one right about there because we just want it to be over on the left hand side. And I'll put another one right down here. And we'll be able to attach our twine to that to keep it secure. Now let's see if I can do this without rolling it off the table like I did when I made the original one. So I'm just going to take an end. I'm going to press it down so that it grabs the glue dot. And I didn't put it right in the center because we're going to come around this two or three times. So I'll bring this here. And then I'm going to wrap it again. And don't pull it too tight. If you do, you're going to get buckling, but you will want to snug it down. This twine is pretty bulky, so it tends to uh, not lay exactly flat. So that's two, but you know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and do three. So let me pull this a little bit tighter here. And bring it around and do it one more time. The faster I go, the tighter it seems to stay. All right, so there's our three times. Then I'll bring it back here. I have just a little bit of the glue dot remaining, I think. If you ever don't, just take another glue dot and put it down. Since I'm using the minis, ah, and there goes the twine. Told you I would drop it. So I'm just going to put a glue dot here so that that twine has something to grab onto. And now I can cut it off. Good thing that's all I needed the twine for, huh? Otherwise I'd have to crawl under my desk and retrieve it. Okay, and now you can go ahead and just kind of make sure you've got it where you want it. And once you've done that, we can go ahead and glue this down to our card base. So let's do that real quick. And I'm going to put a generous amount without being too gloopy. I hate when it comes out the sides. Make sure you get next to the twine there. All right. Bring my card base over here. And whoops, did you see that? I almost put it on the wrong way. I could make it work the other way, but I kind of wanted it to be along the left edge. And I like using the liquid glue for this 
because it gives me just a moment to go ahead and wiggle it around if I need to. But I think I've got that on there pretty good. All right, now we can put that aside for a minute. And we can put our glue dots up because we're going to do some stamping. So I've got my block here. And I have three different things to stamp. It does not matter which order I stamp them in because each one goes on its own little section. Um, I think I'll go ahead and do my dragonfly first. So I'll pull him out and mount him up. One of the things that I really love about uh, this stamp set is it's layered stamping. It's two-step stamping. So once I've got the image down, I can go back and I can stamp the wings to color them in. Or... I could color them in with the blends or with markers. So I have a whole um, lot of different things that I can do. A little too much ink there. A, little, uh, a lot of different options for going ahead and getting this done. Now I stamped it in black last time, but I decided this time I'm going to stick with just the fresh fig because I thought the black was a tiny, tiny bit harsh. So there we've got the um, dragonfly stamp. And I am going to go ahead and stamp the wings in because I thought that just gave it a really nice look. So if you look here, these are the wing fills. So I'll put that down. And I need to stamp off for this one because I don't want it to be quite that dark. So I'm going to stamp off so that I have just a little bit of ink. Then I can come in here and I can line it up. The really nice thing is I can do this set of wings or I could turn it and do the other set of wings. It's whichever one you want to do. Or you can do both. And it's supposed to look a bit watercolored. So if it's a little bit out of the lines, I don't even mind that. All right, so we've got that. And let me just see here. I have this set. So I like to use that on the edges. But then I have another one, and this is really the one that you use uh, most often for the wings because it gives you more surface area. But I wanted just a little bit on those other wings as well. So again, I'm going to stamp off. And this time I'm going to do the other side of the wings because there are four wings there. All right, there we go. Now, if you decided that was too much white, that you didn't like it, you could come back with uh, the more substantive filler stamp, and you could go ahead and you could stamp that down. And that I didn't really have much ink on there, so um, it didn't make much of an impression. But let me show you. If I want both sets of wings completely filled in, all I have to do is go to the other set, and boom. There you go. So that's our dragonfly. I did one more thing with the dragonfly because, as you know, dragonflies are usually out flitting around in the sunshine. So let's give a little bit of uh, lightness to the wings. And for that, I'm taking a jelly roll pen. Let me just get it started here. Make sure I have ink flowing. You could use our Craft White as well and a blender pen. Uh, but I just revamped my office and can't find mine right now. So I'll just rely on my gel pen. And all I'm going to do is just come in and I wipe off my gel pen to make sure I can get some good color on there. 
And all I'm doing is just putting a little bit of a highlight around the edge of those wings. You do want to make sure your ink is dry to get the very best uh, coloration or highlight, I should say. But as you can see, it just gives some lightness to the wing. All right, so I'm going to put that aside. And let's move on to our next one. And that is the roses. I'm going to bring in my graph paper for this because I don't want the full impression of my roses. I just want um, the two that I'm going to be using. So let me pull out the stamp. It's going to make a lot of noise because I've only used this once. Ugh. And they love to stick to that plastic. So as you can see, this is a pretty big image. And it doesn't all fit on there. But I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to take the part I want and put it on my block. Keeping in mind that I'm going, and actually you can just put it on the paper if you want to do that. But keeping in mind that this is going to be set at a diagonal, so we want to get a good angle on those flowers. So we can do that. And then this is an outline stamp so you'll be able to color in and you can see if I inked up quite a bit of it uh, there's more than I need there it would give the impression of that last flower I'm going to go ahead and just wipe the ink off of that section and then let me just line this up over here. Make sure that I have the flower where I want it. Lay it down and then just give it a press and a hold for two or three seconds. And there are my roses. Now my roses, I wanted to go ahead and color in using my stamping blends. So I wanted to pick up some of the color in the DSP. I don't have a crushed curry one. You could certainly use your markers if you have a crushed curry marker uh, that would work really well and they are coming out with a lot of brand new colors in our blend so stay tuned for that. But I thought that the uh, the uh, Calypso Coral would blend well enough with the crushed curry. And I did want my flower to pop out, so it really did make sense for me to use my uh, Calypso Coral. So I'm just gonna take my brush end and start laying down some color. It's just so pretty against that fresh fig. And I'm not being particularly careful. If I have a few little white spots that are left over, doesn't bother me at all because it would be hit by the light. And we're going to use our uh, gel pen, our white gel pen, to give it some additional highlights. So mainly I just want to make sure I get some good color laid down. Just like that. Now, if I wanted darker in areas, I certainly could have used the light Calypso Coral and the dark Calypso Coral, um, but I can still get some shading by using the dark Calypso Coral on top of what I've already put down. I don't know if you can see that, but it makes it just a teeny tiny bit darker. So I can get some shadows. And I'm just loosely putting some in here. Again, not trying to be too careful. Wherever there would be a petal overlapping, I'm trying to lay down some color there. And that's what gives it some dimension. 
and you can come back and do this as many times as you like just giving it a moment to dry between each layer but I think I like that and let's go ahead and take our white gel pen here I mainly just concentrated on laying down highlights at the very tips of the petals and along the top and I'm not doing a straight line I'm kind of doing a little jig jag because that way it really makes it look a bit more natural so just areas where you know the Sun would be hitting it that's where you want to lay down the highlights just kind of looking at my other one definitely along the edges here and actually that's a pretty strong petal so I'll give it quite a bit of highlight so just come in and play around with it I am NOT an artist by any way shape or form of the term if I can do it you can do it and you also once that's dried if you want to come back and hit it again you certainly can do that so I'll put that one aside and the last thing we have to stamp is our sentiment so let me pull that over and again the sentiment comes from beautiful bouquet this is a returning stamp set I am so thankful that they did not retire this one because I use it just for so many things and the sentiments especially are um, great ones to have on hand now here because again I am putting it on a diagonal I definitely am going to lay down my stamp on top of the square of paper because I do want to try and get it as straight as I can all right now I'm going to come back in make sure I have it inked up well yep that's looking good straighten this out and I'm just using the lines on my grid paper to line up the points with and now I can come in here trying not to hit the camera and stamp it down and there we have it woohoo I got that one pretty straight so that's all the stamping that we're going to be doing now let's bring in all of our pieces because the next step is matting them and for that I'm going to use multi-purpose liquid glue again I like that little bit of wiggle room so I'll just put it on the back of the image and I find if I can usually get one side lined up the other side does really well so let me just do that and then I can put it down bring in my next mat get my glue on it and line up my edges give it a good press make sure that there's good contact and now for our last one and I really try to take extra care with my sentiment one because this will definitely show if you don't have a uh, it lining up on your mat well but I think we did it I have a couple little rough edges I'll take care of those when we're done so now let's bring back in our card and decide where we're going to put these you certainly can be as random with them as you want 
So just because I put my flower there doesn't mean you have to do it. I did it that way because I wanted it, again, to be a little vignette or a little scene. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to dry fit these. We want them at an angle. And just decide. See that my dragonfly is up a little high. So I'm going to bring this down and this over. Make sure I'm not going off the page. And then once I have my placement, I can start putting them or attaching them to the card base. And I'm going to use my dimensionals for that. I did want these to pop off the page. I love the shadow that creates underneath them and the extra depth that it gives. So I'll take my dimensionals and I think I'm going to do my flower first. That was the easiest one, as I recall, uh, for me to put down to make sure that the other two lined up. And you can use the regular size dimensionals. Uh, I just happen to have these sitting in my bucket. So I'm going to use those. They do love to stick to you. All right. Let's peel those off. Try to keep them corralled in one area. Come on. If you ever are trying to put it down and it's not working, just give it a press in with your thumbnail and that helps loosen the backing so you're not pulling the dimensional away from the card base or your design element. Okay. So again, I'm just going to line this up and place her down. Now that's going to make lining up the other two very easy because I just base it off of the edges of it. As you can see, this really is a very, very simple card to make. It has a few pieces, but there's nothing complex about being able to cut out the squares and put them on a diagonal or the little bit of stamping that we did. Uh, the card itself goes really quickly, but it has a lot of impact. And you can do it in different colors. I know that uh, this same pattern for the DSP comes with um, leaves that are mint macaron and crushed curry. And that would give it even more of a springtime look. So don't be afraid to play around with it. I could also see this working really well with uh, any kind of a, a leafy or floral pattern. Uh, you could even take a piece of colored cardstock and use our layering leaves embossing folder uh, to, for a background. And that would give it another look. So don't be afraid to just experiment, not only with different colors, but with different DSPs as well. Okay, last one's going on here. If I can get these off. Goodness, these little ones, the backings love to just be stubborn. But we got it done. And also make sure when you're putting it down that you're not doing it like that. It would make it a little bit difficult to read. This one is going to touch the twine. I have choices. I can put it under or I can leave it float on top. I think I'm going to leave this one float on top, which is what I did with the other one. So I'm just lining up these corners and pressing it down. Let's take our bow. I'm going to attach the bow that I made with a glue dot. Glue dots really are excellent.
for use with this twine. It is very coarse and very thick. So you need something that's strong. Now you can put your bow at an angle like that, or you can put it across however you like it. I think this one I'm going to go ahead and angle. I rather like the way that looks. Then all we have to do is trim down our tails like that. You can fuss with them a little bit. Make sure they're the way you want. All right, there's one last thing that we want to do, and that is to put a little bit of uh, embellishment on it. And for that, I'm going to use glitter enamel dots. And these come in our new colors. So here you've got, I think that's the mint macaron. You've got granny apple green, lovely lipstick, and gorgeous grape. And I'm going to use the gorgeous grape just because it is the closest match to my card. So I use the smaller ones, but not the itty bitty ones. So you've got four different sizes here. Large, medium, small, and extra teeny tiny. So I'm going to use the small ones. And just place them wherever you like. I tend to try and do things in groupings of three as that seems to be pleasing to the eye. All right. Now I want to see if I can get just a little bit more highlight on those wings. Now that everything is dry, I'm going to come back in and just follow right along the edges of the wings. Okay, and there we have it, our completed card. So I hope you enjoyed uh, watching me create this card and that you will give it a go too. It really was a fun one to make. And as you're going through uh, your stamp sets, either the new ones when you get them or the ones that you already have in your stash, Take a look at those smaller stamps within your stamp sets and see if you can make a little uh, vignette or collage just using those. Uh, oftentimes, they can have every bit as much of an impact on your card as the larger statement stamps do. Okay, are there any questions out there? Hi, Patricia. How are you? All right. Well, if that's it, I will go ahead and uh, end the video uh, so I can get you all back to your Saturdays. Uh, one last thing before I go, though. We do have, as you know, with the new catalog, uh, most of or all of the DSP usually retires. And that makes me sad a little bit, but at the same time, it's the perfect opportunity to look at what you can do with that DSP. It doesn't always have to be a card. I'm going to bring in this little uh, tool caddy that my brother made for me on his 3D printer. And I embellished it, or I just put some of the delightful Daisy DSP on it to give it a nice look. So pull out that DSP that you still have and look around the house and just uh, start slapping it on things. Who knows? I may end up slapping it on some stuff on my husband's desk. Uh, I just love the look of DSP added to three-dimensional objects. All right, everyone, I will go ahead and close out the video. Thank you, thank you so much for joining me. 
Um, I'll have the Tuesday night beginner series coming up on Tuesday. And then next Saturday, we'll do another Saturday Anything Goes. And you just never know what it might be. So stay tuned. Have a great rest of the weekend, y'all. Bye-bye now.